Well, this trail looks like a bit of fun in front of me here. Nothing but rocks and technical driving, which is my favorite really in the Jeep. But as you can see, it just goes off into the badlands there where the logging machines have been. Hopefully you can hear me above the wind. It is extremely windy. There's some kind of cyclone just off the coast of Norway. It's coming over the mountains and we're getting rain and wind and storms and it's all kind of crazy. But I thought I'd get out for a couple of days in the vehicle. Bit of fishing, bit of hiking, bit of camping. Gonna set off, find somewhere else, see how it goes. The start of every trip, pick up other people's rubbish. <laughs> pretty excited about this trip because it's going to be a trip down memory lane. I'm going to be following, camping, fishing a small windy river called the Kvelorn, which me and Megan canoed back in 2016. I'm starting down river near a lake camp I explored last autumn and like usual I'm going to be taking the forest roads to get to the river itself which may or may not be a bad idea depending on how flooded this next bit is. You probably recognize this place from one of my other videos and I drove through it in the wet season. Really flooded then, but not really much muddier. Legend has it that if you get stuck here, Bigfoot comes along and uh, he'll steal your wallet and take you back to his cave. So I mean, you know, some people probably deliberately get stuck here because they're into that kind of shit, but not me. So I'm gonna air down my tires to maybe 10 PSI, something like that and uh, let's hope. Actually, I'll get some recovery gear ready too. On a more interesting note, there's uh, false morels everywhere at the moment. Not good for dogs. Not as bad on humans, but bad for dogs. Well, there are a few hairy moments there. Caught a glimpse of Bigfoot there. He was he was excited, but I managed to get through it. It's only really a short bit, but that's the worst part of this road. I've been on it before, as I say. Now we're just in this lovely forest here. It goes on for quite a while. I'll try and find myself a nice river or lake to uh, do some fishing and find a camp spot.
This is just a pit stop. Some lunch, a cup of tea and a bit of fishing to see if anything's around. It's very shallow waters though, with lots of downed trees just beneath the surface. Takes me back to our trip in 2016. It was more of a portage trip than a canoe trip for these reasons. But it's all quiet in the waters, that's what I tell myself anyway. This is also my first outing with my solar panels. I can really see these things making a huge difference this summer, and it's nice to see them working. Anyway, time to keep going up river as I have a destination in mind. Here we go, this is camp. I've been going up river almost all day and it doesn't look like much here, but just a short walk down there and it opens up into a beautiful little part of the river where it kind of starts off and it opens up into a very large lake, a series of large lakes really that um, me and Megan did quite a bit of fishing on years ago as I explained. But anyway, the winds have died down a bit, so that's a big plus, but uh, let's have a look around. This looks nice. It's a really beautiful location. I have been here before, as I say, when me and Meg did our little trip, and it was a while ago though. There's an old cabin here. Hopefully Bigfoot's not moved in. Hmm. See who's home. Stove's gone. The heart of the cabin. Mm.
wasp nests and bats, which is a good thing. Well, it used to be in pretty good condition, but then so did everything. But, uh, good job I didn't find any used underwear because those are the warning signs. Used underwear, um, aubergines with condoms on, all that kind of shit. Get out of there. Get out of there fast. Or you could wait around a while. Just depends what you want to do. Well, it's a noisy day in the north. Never normally hear any aeroplanes. Very occasionally, very occasionally, but we have some military aircraft flying around everywhere at the moment. Solar panels are doing their job, 135 watts. Fridge is drawing 65, 64, and it's on full power at the moment. It's obviously it's in the sun. My curiosity is though, what happens if I clean the panels? Given they uh, have a lot of dust on them. Oh, look at these shiny bastards. <laughs> so shiny. Oh, dang it. Can't be the top one so good. That'll do. 140 watts. I mean, it could just be a coincidence, but uh, I'm going to pretend it isn't. boiled a little bit too much water there. Nice to sit down with a bit of a cuppa, a lot of driving today. Going to do some fishing now but me and Meg and little Max have a big trip this year, going to be living in the Jeep quite a bit, potentially going into Finland and then travelling up the coast and then into the north of the country and then potentially going um, west into Sweden again and then maybe into Norway and maybe then back down. It's quite a long trip and uh, we're hoping to be in the vehicle for quite a while. So, you know, hence the solar panels. Just having solar panels means I can be stationary like this in, in this spot for quite a long time, provided I actually think a bit about where the sun is going to be. You know, I should really be parking the vehicle so the roof tent's opening like that and the solar is, is taking up the day. But I'm only here for one night, so it doesn't really matter. But it should give us a lot of uh, flexibility but the question is is how everyone's going to do with the flies you've seen me out on lots of summer travels and i know i've shown some of these clips before but the flies are a tricky part of the summer here you have mug mosquitoes everybody complains about those really that who come here anyway but they're not the worst of it you have sveen which is like tiny tiny little flies they call them no seams in canada you have knot which is like uh little black fly that bites with incisors like a biting midge but pretty pretty chunky thing um, terrible for dogs those things and for children they always bite you around the eyes and on the ears the soft the soft tissue basically to get blood real quick um, so you know if you've got to take a dump in the woods it's tough or if you're a, if you're a, you're you're a lady and you you've got to go to the toilet it's not easy so yeah, it's one of those things really you've got to, got to deal with. But you also have brems, um, and brems are like these massive horse flies, and they're really painful. And some people react hor horribly to them. I saw one girl get bitten on the arm, and her arm literally turned into like a king-sized twiglet. It was just... <laughs> it looked like she could beat people to death with it. Like, like, you know, she was some sort of fictional character with a club arm. It was horrific, but... Uh, you know, that's just the way it goes. So carrying antihistamine can obviously help with that if you are allergic, but you know, that, that's really the toughest part of traveling in the summer here. And your best bet 
I'm telling you, fire doesn't make a goddamn difference unless it's a forest fire. Thermocell's just crap anyway, and it's a waste of money, and it's pretty much banned in Finland, I think, to, for use outdoors. I wouldn't use it around my children, because um, it's just poison, um, and it's crap in the wind. The only thing that actually helps is wind. If you have strong winds coming in, if you pick a camp where the winds are gusting in, you'll be all right with the flies. You'll have a fly-free experience. That's just all you can hope for. And as you can see, the wind's gone. And the McDonald's has just turned up for everything to eat. Despite my rants about the flies, they haven't really ever stopped me soaking up my time out here, even at their worst. But family vacations are not all about me. Time to get some fishing in though, and my time on the fly rod is pretty unsuccessful. I'm a beginner, obviously, and right now I need a bit more space. Despite that, I give it an hour before switching to the spinning rod, which yields results immediately as expected in such a location. Young pike and perch, hopefully more perch in my case, as it's much better eating. Well, it may not seem like it on camera, but I've been fishing for about four hours. It's been a really nice afternoon. Listening to all the sounds and looking at all the sights, you can see a lot of activity in the background. You've got some mayfly landing on the, the little river here. I have had a go with the fly rod, but being a beginner, this environment's a little bit tricky, like by the water's edge and stuff. Yeah, I'm getting snagged all the time and uh, not having much luck. So I switched to the spinning rod and I have had a lot of luck, but it's mainly just been pike. I've been pulling out lots of young pike, um, as expected, at this time of year. I almost had a nice perch, and it was definitely an eater. I would have had it straight on the murica and breaded it, and it would have been perfect. But uh, yeah, using barbless hooks, got to keep the lines tight. I was also screwing around with my camera, to be fair, and uh, lost it, so deservedly so, really. Kind of need the inflatable boat just to be sailing up there, or, or rowing up there go out onto the lake and do some trawling, try and catch some bigger stuff. There's a few islands further out and things that I camped on maybe sort of, well, back in 2016, and I had some big pike over there, so it'd be interesting. But I do have another inflatable device in the rooftop tent. It's just whether I could stay on top of it whilst on the water. It's been a long winter and I've had some practice, so Mm. But anyway, time for some dinner. I'm flipping starving. One last cast for old time's sake. Oh, pike again. To be fair, it feels, it feels better than the other one, but you can never tell. They put up such a fight, sometimes they can be tiny. Oh, it is a little bit better. I should probably tire it out. Ah, oh, it's not much better.
online and uh, it does look like there is a fire ban. So uh, it's, it's kind of the thing really here in Sweden all, all summer you'll, you'll find a lot of fire bans and rightfully so a mate of mine's in the fire department getting called out all the time and uh, you know it can be it can be pretty bad actually so uh, that's kind of why a lot of the time I use a stove in the summer and then in the autumn and the winter I usually get the uh, get the fires on it's quite nice actually early winter to have a fire tried to make a few little improvements to this by making this windshield this isn't actually a windshield this is designed to wrap round pots and uh, reduce fuel consumption um, sort of kind of like a, a shroud almost like a heat thermal exchanger something like that I don't know what you'd really call it but I'm using it as a windshield and it seems to be doing the job actually a little bit of spaghetti bolognese tonight nothing too special but uh, yeah we'll just uh, sort of very fine knife this good for carving spoons this knife really good Probably going to need a different knife for this. A bit, a bit on the big side. There we go. This pasta looks really, really starchy because it's gluten-free pasta. Normally, you should boil the water and put it in, but the Medica doesn't really produce a, a boil as such. Let's have a gander. Been cooking for a while. Give it a little bit longer. I'm pretty sure we're not almost there. And there we go, a meal for one. There should have been three. I obviously miss Megan and Max quite a lot. I do miss them a lot when I come out on my own. Men, Johan Ost, Bara Litzal. So, let's go funka. Let's go funka, it's bra. Listen to the sound of the river. Should be nice to sleep to. Bit of white noise, you know. But that's it. And I shall turn the camera off. No, I should try it first. This uh, pasta, um, it's easier to do pasta, sorry, than it is spaghetti. It is good. If you are gonna run one of these things and pretty much do everything on it, like me, and uh, it's always good to keep it going after a meal, just on a low heat, and put water in it. And then uh, you just give it a clean, basically. Let it steam off. And uh, a bit of water just stops everything sort of sticking to it. Yeah, and now it's ready to roll again. Don't need to do much with it, not much cleaning. There's a lot of faff putting all this stuff away, you probably ask. Why don't you just leave it out if you're going to use it in the morning? And really, it's, it's just that I don't like to, uh, to tempt fate, I guess. I, I mean, I've, I've seen two bears since I've lived here. The last camp I did in the winter, 
Uh, one was standing probably no more than, I don't know, sort of 45, 50 yards away from me. And it was watching, it was watching me for ages, it must have been. Um, the only way I saw it is I was talking to the camera and the bear was kind of behind the camera there. And I screwed up what I was saying, so I clapped to create a spike in the audio. So I knew that when I edited it, I'd just chop it straight off without even watching that bit. And then when I clapped, the bear, the bear ran away. Um, and that was, that was pretty, it shouldn't have been awake at that time. So it, some, somehow it had been woken up, but um, you know, you don't normally get issues with bears here. They're, they're very shy and um, Although it is a, a brown bear and it's, it's um, I mean, I guess it's, it is the same species on paper as the grizzly bear, I guess, that you have in the Americas, but a, but a completely different mentality. You don't, then they're not as big either. They just don't, they don't grow as big. I mean, obviously they're, they're very large because they're bears, but they're nothing compared to what you see over in the Americas. But uh, it's just, it's just camp practice, you know, it's just conducting yourself in a way that isn't, sloppy or um because because that yeah complacency do you know what i mean it's like complacency with knives complacency with fire firearms anything you know you get complacent in life and that's when mistakes happen it's always good to to just you know be respectful i guess of of the things that are out there that can f you up Well, it may not seem like it, but it's actually uh, about half past 11 at night. So way past my bedtime normally. But I'm gonna go up in the roof tent and uh, just chill for a while, do some reading. Samantha's up there waiting for me. She's at about 10 PSI right now. So I did take out the underwater drone uh, just for a little bit of a spin. I didn't think I'd be able to see much in the water because the water here is extremely brown from all the iron in, in the rock. But yeah, I just took it for a spin around the areas that I was, was fishing just to see what the riverbed was like. And a lot of plants, a lot of rocks and some big logs as well fallen down. But I couldn't see any fish on my mobile phone because the screen is so small and the quality on the screen is not so great. But maybe when I check out the footage when I get back, I might see something on there. But um, you know, it's a bit, it's, it's not got the, the same vanesse as the aerial drone from a videography perspective, but it's more of a curiosity. And when you get it in clear water in the mountains and it's in a lake and the water's still, it's a million times better. You know, in this kind of murky water here, it's, it's kind of crappy. But anyway, time for bed. No northern lights, no time lapses of the stars at this time of year. Usually you'd see that on my channel. Um, you know, this is as dark as it's gonna get. So I will see you in the morning. Well, it's been a very nice night. I slept very well. I slept pretty heavily as well, but I tell you what, it, it was about one degree C last night and it's June. It's the 1st of June today. Pretty disappointed I didn't get anything on the time lapse though. I left the camera running the entire night and uh, I also used a packet of Monster Munch just over there in the bushes as bait. And I know there's a particular individual out there who he can't resist that shit, but he didn't turn up. And, uh, yeah, perhaps he's moved on.
Now I've used this setup for almost a year, like the draw system and the arrangement, how things are laid out. Um, I'm starting to want to do some changes to it. And the main thing really is just how the Murica fits in the back there and it's sort of interfering with the battery. I've had to cut a slot in the alu box to actually make it work. So this is the annoying bit. You have to put that in there like that. And then the battery is kind of in the way. It goes around there and it slots in like this. And then you can move the battery back. And the lid sort of just goes in like that. And that's it. One of my ideas was to have the cooking system and the fridge in one sort of platform that came out quite far and the Murica would be pre-set or just sitting in like a platform with, with a hole in it where it could just drop in and it had no, have no legs on it, just the gas kind of somewhere tucked away in a compartment or something um, that you could access underneath to sort of pump the white gas and all that kind of stuff. I only really use white gas with it, it's just much cheaper so I won't ever use anything else with it. But the stove obviously detaches and I use it on an open fire so then the idea would be because it's only dropped in the platform it could come out, put legs on it, chuck it on the open fire because to be honest with you my preferred way to cook with this and in general when camping is on an open fire. It's much nicer and um, you know if you don't have swirling winds you don't really get smoke in your eyes and you can kind of make sure the wind's going in one direction or the smoke even's going in one direction but with the fire ban and everything it's pretty irresponsible to, to do that so there needs to be a solution otherwise. Well that's me all packed up. Everything goes away pretty fast these days especially the roof tent. Very happy with that. Now it's got solar on top. I mean, what a game changer. I mean, there'll be a lot of people out there thinking, yeah, obviously you idiot. But for me, it's kind of a new thing. I've not had solar before. And with a crappy little fridge like I've got, those thermoelectric ones, they drink power. You know, so it's good to be able to have something that's sort of pumping in the power when you're stationary. It makes a big difference. I mean, it kept that EcoFlow battery at about, yeah, sort of like around 97, 98% for a lot of the day, which which is pretty good and that fridge was running on full power which cools everything off inside to about one degree C. So um, hopefully we'll see how that goes in the summer but I might stay here another night but I have spotted an area downstream that I really like the look of and I want to take a hike there and do some fishing and see what comes out. Probably a lot more pike and uh, a bore and sorry a perch yeah uh, just because you know I'm fishing like I'm spinning basically if I took the fly rod then you know I probably could pull out some other species as well but uh, yeah I'm not going to do that this time. But I hope you've enjoyed this video it's just another snippet of an adventure I'm on I don't like to film everything I do when I'm out because you know I like to uh, keep a lot of it for myself too but um, I'll be filming a lot of adventures this summer so if you enjoyed this video stay tuned thanks for watching thanks for all your support and I'll see you again in another one take care.